What's up, good people? It's your boy, Leroy McKenzie Jr., here to talk to you about the collaboration book, Keys to Living in the Overflow, and the chapter, my chapter, Increase the Value. Um, and what what I'm discussing in this chapter uh, is how we increase our value um, by bringing um, God into our life. And the story that's used uh, in this chapter, or as we use as an example, is the um, the point where Jesus comes to the comes to Peter when he had been fishing all night. Peter had been fishing all night. Him and and the others were on the boat. They had been fishing all night. They had the nets out there, and they caught absolutely nothing all night. This was their regular job at the time, um, but they had gone out fishing all night and caught absolutely nothing. But um, it's not until Jesus comes along and tells them to cast their nets on the other side of the boat that they catch so many fish that they are unable to put the fish on their boat, it was too heavy for their boat. This is how many fish that they had. It would have, it would have virtually sunk the boat. So what is it? What am I saying? What does this have to do with the keys to living in the overflow? What does it have to do with, um, with increase your value? Here's here's how we connect this. Um, here's what we'll discuss, and I'll give you just some. I'm gonna give you three points. Uh, on this, on increase the value, uh, and how we increase the value, our value, with being with Christ versus being without Christ. First thing I'm going to talk to uh, talk about is uh, come to know who God is. Second thing is what we um, what we believe we are versus what God or what God knows that we are. And then the third thing uh, is our chain, our our charge to produce our charge to produce and um, and add value to others. So I'm going to go through those three points again. That's to come to know who, G- who God is, who Jesus is, what we believe we are versus what God knows that we are, and then our charge to produce and add value to others. So let's talk about come to know who God is. Well, how did they, how did Peter come to know who God was? How did he know who he was? Well, he was a disciple of, of Christ. And the thing that, that, that Jesus tells him, uh, when they initially meet is I will make you fishers of men. They were fishers, fishermen, but Jesus says, I will make you fishers of men. Now, I think that the thing that we uh, as Christians come to know when we um, come to come to understand who God is and we have that encounter with God as Peter had with Jesus at that time um, was to actually to understand and know who he was. Did he know who he was at the time when he told him to cast his net on the other side? He didn't necessarily know the value of God and then the value of God in him before he cast it down. Because remember, he had just spent all night fishing and caught absolutely nothing. Caught nothing. So he's probably thinking, what are you talking about? Cast my net on the other side. Man, I just spent all night fishing. It wasn't nothing there. Not a thing. But that's the key. And that's the key that we have to understand in understanding who God is. That before we come to know who God is, we we don't understand the direction that we may not understand the direction that our life is going in or we don't know the direction that our life is going in the purpose that we have in our in our life the mission that we have in our life all of those things give us nothing we feel and and i think a lot of us have felt that way where we 
felt as if we had no value in who we were, what we were doing. There seemed to be no kind of purpose or why connected to who we were. But once we come to know who God is, once we have that encounter, and he tells us, no, don't do it this way, do it that way. How many times have, have you wanted, have you gone and done something your way? And then once you've talked with God, once you've heard from God and he tells you, no, don't do it that way, do it this way. And then when you've gone to do it his way, you found out that it worked out in such a way that one, you knew it was only him. Because there was no way in the world you could accomplish what, what it was that you accomplished by yourself, through yourself, or or, or, um, or any that kind of way. So you knew it had to be him. But it, 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 it also increased the value that you had. Not just because, you know, it, it may have, and we're not even talking in the monetary sense. We're talking in the sense of the, the value of your life. We're talking that your life now had purpose. And that was the thing. <clears throat> you now have purpose. You now have a, a mission. You now have a message that you stand on. You have a movement that you have created or that you are behind. And you now have, have, have a motivation that's different than when it was your thinking, your idea, your, your perception of where it is, that, of, of what you wanted. But now it's being done God's way. And when we do things God's way, as this story shows us in the, in, in the uh, increase in the value that we have, when we do things God's way, he has a way of being able to pour into us those things that we need in order to be able to be who it is that he wants us to be and needs us to be. Uh, and created us to be. So, coming to know who he is is the first key. That's key number one to increasing the value. You increase your value by knowing who he is. That means you got to spend time with him. That means you got to spend time in his word. That means you have to talk to him in order to be able to hear from him. I'm going to say that again. You have to talk to him in order to be able to hear from him. And when you hear from him, it's not a thing of just listening to him. It's hearing him. Okay, God, did I hear you say this? Did I hear you say that? It's just like having a conversation with with, uh, with, with, the, with a friend of yours or with your parents to give you advice or whatever. Those kind of things. They hear you or you hear them, but are you listening? Or I should say you're listening, but did you hear them? So that's the first step. Second step, like I said, is what we believe who we are versus what God knows who we are. <laughs> yeah, think about that. Here we are thinking about what and who we are in our lives and what we we have these grand old plans of, of who we you know are going to be in life. I guarantee you, if you if you have any number of years on you like I do, I'm 51, and you have this grand idea of who you're going to become in your 20s, you you have this idea you you're going to do this, you're going to accomplish that, you're gonna you're gonna work here, you're gonna do this, you're gonna have this, you're gonna have that, but you find out <laughs> that everything that you intended to be was not in, or well, all of it may not have been, some of it may have been, but most of it has not been what God had planned for you. And that's key. So we may want to have done this. We may have wanted to do that. But God's will trumps everybody else's will. Nothing happens outside of his will. If you don't believe me, ask Job. Ask 
uh, ask Job about that. Ask, um, uh, oh my God, whether that that wanted that didn't want to go to Nineveh, uh, Jonah. Ask Jonah. He said, "Lord, I'm not going to Nineveh. Them folks over there crazy. I ain't trying to talk to them. They ain't gonna do nothing, you know. But act crazy if I go over there and talk to them." But what did God say? God said, no, I want you to go to Nineveh. He tried to go in the opposite direction, which he thought he knew what he wanted to do versus what God already knew he was going to do. He was going to go where God wanted and needed him to go. That's why he told him to go to Nineveh. Now, he fussed and cried and even tried to run away. But at the end of the day, where did he wind up? In Nineveh. And 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 when he went to Nineveh, he understood the value that he had and what he was doing in Nineveh. Same thing with Peter. When he when Jesus told Peter, "I will make you fishers of men," what you're doing is good. You're making a living. You're doing what you're supposed to do right now to be able to do. But I have a bigger calling for you. Fishers. I want you to be able to add value to other people just like I'm adding value to you. That's what God does. When he adds value to us by pouring in us, we have the responsibility to pour into others. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. We're just a pass-through. We're a conduit for what God wants to get done. And when we can understand that, then we understand it's not about what we think of who we are. It's it, it, We go into what God knows we're going to be. That's what that's all about. So that's key number two. And then key number three, uh, what we said, point number three is our charge to produce and add value to others. That's what I just mentioned. So how do you add value to others? I call it the picture in the and picture in the glass theory, which is where sometimes we're the picture where we get poured into. Remember Peter sitting on the on the water, sitting on the water, sitting on the boat all night. Nothing happens. But then when Jesus comes along and says, "Here, let me pour something into you. Let me give you something." And the picture in the glass theory is where, you know, you go into a restaurant, you're sitting at a, as you're sitting at the table, you're sitting at the table and there's glasses or they bring glasses to the table and give everyone at the table a glass. And then what do they do? Um, they bring a pitcher to the table, whether it's lemonade, water, iced tea, tea, whatever, that they'll bring soda, what they bring to the table. But the pitcher is meant to pour into all of the glasses, and sometimes we're the pitcher, and sometimes we're the glass. We first have to be the glass before we can be the pitcher. Or I, sh- I shouldn't even say one of the other. We, 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 we are either the pitcher sometimes or we're the glass sometimes. When we are the glass, we get poured into. We're learning. Jesus took that time. To tell them to cast the net on the other side. To teach them. That was a lesson to them. That you fished all night. You did all of these things that you wanted to do in order to be able to try and do what it is that you wanted to accomplish. But you didn't accomplish anything. But when I came along and I gave you what it was that you needed and understood that needed to be in you. I need to be in you. Before you can accomplish what it is that you need to accomplish. Because once he was on the scene. Once he was there. Once he was within them. Once he had the word for them. They were able to. They were able to then accomplish what they accomplished. What they needed to accomplish that night. Which was to become fishers. of, Which was to gather all of the fish. And here's the thing about it. Here's, here's, here's the key about that with 
giving us the charge. Once they had the fish, they had so much fish that they could not use it all themselves. They had exceedingly and abundantly more than they had asked or even could think of. Sound familiar? So they, their value was increased <clears throat> not only to themselves, but their value became such an increase that those that were connected to them, their value increased because they got the benefits of being connected to Peter and the other fishermen that were there. Because they had to, they had so much that they had to give it to some of the other fishermen. So can you imagine that? And that's why it gives us that he pours so much in us as, as, as him being the picture for us. That we get so filled that we then become, now get charged with being the picture. And who he was. And we get charged with being the picture to pour into the glasses that are around us. And that's the charge that we get. That's the third key. That we have to then pour into the others that we are connected to, just like they did because of the abundance that they have. So when you have those three things, when you know who God is, when you come to know who God is, when you understand who you are versus what God knows you are going to be, you understand that it's not about you, it's about what God says you're going to be or wants you to be. And then the third thing is that you get charged with now producing and pouring into other people. And and when you do those three things, you increase your value. And not only do you increase your value, you've now been charged to increase the value of the others that you have an encounter with. So um, those are just a couple of things that we talk about in this chapter. We'll ho- we hope that uh, I hope that you get from the chapter and you can see those things and see the value in it and take a look at the reflections and and the questions and really go into those questions and think about those questions and how Peter handled his situation with with God and even believing that he didn't he, he he didn't even deserve to be blessed the way that God blessed him and and that's how a lot of us do feel we feel as if when God does bless us that we don't deserve it and truth is we don't deserve it but he doesn't do it because we deserve it or not he does it because he's God and it's his will to do that for us so take those reflections that that think about it The chapter three, increase the value, your thoughts, your questions that you go in to answer, uh, that you answer about you and take those in and move forward in where you are um, with, you know, with yourself. And then also with the keys to living uh, in the overflow, how you can live in the overflow from God, because it's, it's all overflow. Once we come into who God is and us being men of God. It's about coming into that, that realization, that, that understanding of living in the overflow. Because when you live in the overflow, you understand who you are as a man. You understand the power that you have as a man. You live in the overflow in your, in your faith, in your family, your finances, and your future. In all of those aspects of your life, you come to live, you come to live in the overflow. So... Hope this has been beneficial for you. Hope you this is this is good for you. You can take it and understand it. Um, chew on it a little bit. Think about it, and and we hope that you enjoy uh, the uh, enjoy the book and that you enjoy what it is that we're trying to pour into you as men. We'll talk to you soon. Um, as I always say, chase the impact because when you chase the impact, you change the world. And we as men, let's go change. The, let's go change as Christian men. Let's go, or even non-Christian men, we want you to become and understand who God is. But when you do that, when you chase the impact, you change the world. And we as men can do and be who God has intended for us to be. So we'll talk to you soon.